that is happening on uh, October 19th and 20th. And the kind folks at Viturgia have donated a uh, booth for us for the Chaos Project as part of their sponsorship. So um, it's virtual. It's really cool. I have not personally done a virtual booth yet, but so I'm, I'm excited to try this out. Um, and it has a little moon landing, lunar, little lunar pod thing. It's pretty cool because um, that's their theme. Anyway, I digress. We do have uh, slots if you are interested in chatting with people about the Chaos Project. There is a sign-up sheet, and um, I have, oh, thank you for recording this, Matt. I apologize. I did not do that. Um, if you would like to staff the virtual booth, feel free to add your name wherever. I, I'm not sure how many people we will need, so I'm, I'm just guessing we will need two. Um, but if we have a lot of people who would like to participate, then I, I put my name down a lot. So I can, by all means, I, I'm great at not doing stuff. So <laughs> I'm more than happy to uh, stand back and let others have a chance to, to chat with people about chaos. So um, feel free to add your name wherever you want. And I'll make sure that you have all the information beforehand on how, how it works and what you're supposed to do and all that stuff. And also the conference itself is free to attend. So um, if you're not virtual conferenced out yet, um, I, it, All Things Open is always an amazing conference, um, so I highly recommend it, and you can just register yourself for free and pass that along to anyone else you think might be interested in that, too. Are there any questions about that or comments or thoughts? I guess if... Go ahead, Don. I'd say... Oh, well, I was just going to... I was just going to add a comment that I'm, I'm giving a talk on Project Health at, at All Things Open, so featuring several chaos metrics. Do you have a link? Appropriately attributed. Attributed. <laughs> attributed? Yes. <laughs> I think. What is what is that? I don't I don't know what that is, but sorry. <laughs> I, I can't help myself. <laughs> Do you have a link for it, Don? Or is it easy enough to track down in the schedule? Oh, sorry for the talk. I thought you meant did I link to the chaos project from my from my talk. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll drop a link. I'm sure I can find okay. one. Cool. I'll put that in the weekly newsletter too, Don, just to help spread the word. Cool. Thanks. Anything else with all things open? Any other questions? comments. I guess mine is to Daniel and to Georg who are on the call. Thank you to Patricia for donating the booth. It's awesome. Yeah, a thousand percent. Thank you very, very much. Cool. All right. Um, and then from last week, uh, I just wanted to remind everyone again about Hacktoberfest. I know uh, Grimoire Lab, uh, they are going to be setting up a page, a dedicated page on their website about how they people can participate and um, all of that good stuff. And I know Augur, I'm pretty sure, Sean, right, is going to be um, labeling some issues that would be appropriate for Hacktoberfest as well. So uh, if you, if anyone on the call or if you know. If yes, we are. Colleagues, awesome. If you have colleagues that are looking for something to contribute to or people that you know in the community, by all means, point them in our direction. We would love to have them. Should we, should we maybe make a blog post on it just real quickly? And we could point sure. to the, I mean, like it could be like that big, you know, like just two sentences yeah. that we could tweet out too. Yeah, that's great. I'm assuming you're wanting me to write that, is that? No, I can write it. <laughs> no, I'm, just I don't mind. I'm just kidding. I don't mind writing it. It's totally fine. I love yeah, giving you a hard time. Matt. Other, I'm sorry. It's okay. Whenever people use the word we, that always means you. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Voluntold. That's, no, it's fine. It's all good. So someone will write a blog post and uh, yeah. We can do it together. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right. Um, yeah. So we'll do that. Uh, DNI badging promotion. So last time we said um, we were going to ask people, we were going to voluntold, voluntel people to um, if they could, but uh, at all 
reach out to events that they know of that were uh, hosting events um, or organizations they know of that were hosting events to have them request a badge. I don't know if that happened. Does anyone have any follow-up or any feedback or Matt Snell, did we get any? I don't think it happened. I just put this list together like with the, so last time we actually had people just put down the list of the conferences and then I went back through the list and tracked down what sort of seemed like the best contact person for that oh, list. Oh, perfect. Okay. And so, so now we actually need to contact yeah. them. Got you. Yep. Okay. Do we have any volunteers who want to do that? Or if everybody takes one or I don't know how, how all you want to do it. I don't know. Some people are a little nervous and not really comfortable just blindly reaching I out think to we people. We have three conference. resource persons uh, here, like Idiko, we have Amy and uh, Nicole. Yeah, they will be very helpful if they, if they are willing to do it, but they are resource persons in most of those conferences. Yeah, like the OpenStack, Ethics, and many others. That yep. are, yeah. yeah, the OpenStack one, um, obviously Armstrong with Sohil, with Bram. I think we know these folks and I think they can help out. I can fill in wherever we need anybody um, to reach out to someone that nobody knows. Um, and and get, get fill in the spots that we need filled. How about Matt? You and I can write an email that we could kind of use as the template email. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Folks. I can talk to Jennifer at All Things Open. I know we said it might be too soon because they're you know pretty far along, but. Um, yeah, I can reach out to her. Any other comments or questions about that? Cool. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next one, which is the Apache Incubator Clutch status. I don't know who put this on there. I think we Maybe just Matt lost did. Matt G. <laughs> you, good timing, Matt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know anything about this at all. So I guess we can wait till Matt comes, rejoins. And it looks like that might have been the last item on the agenda. How is that possible? Uh, let's look at what we had last week. Uh, Matt was going to do a slide, a Google slide template for attribution. We'll ask him about that when he comes back. Uh, Oktoberfest. Um, oh, the community health reports. We've been working out some, some bugs with that. Uh, so um, if you know people who have tried to submit a report, request and have not been able to let us know and we can reach out to them. Uh, I know there were some issues with the images, the logos that were kind of blocking the form. So um, I think we're, I think we're getting close to working out those few bugs. It was just a few browser bugs that, you know, cause the internet works on some browsers and not on the others. So, cause things have to be hard all the time. So um, yeah. And I'm looking down here to see what else we have. Oh, dependencies. So I know that there have been um, a lot of interest, obviously, in talking about dependencies. And I think, <laughs> I think we've gone back and forth with, should we have one group dedicated to just talking about dependencies or should we spread it across the working groups? And I think, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the last thing that was kind of decided after the risk group um, last week was that we would still keep it in each working group. So that's my understanding is that every working group will be addressing the the idea of dependencies in their own ways. So obviously it will look a little different in the evolution group versus the risk group versus whoever else. So um, if, if you are one of those people who are like, yeah, I'm really interested in talking about that, then you might pick a working group or two to join if you can and bring those up 
at the, at those individual meetings. Does anyone have questions on that or more to bring to that conversation that I was not privy to? Because I was not at that risk group. That's I'm just getting the information from the mailing list. Yeah, I can, I can share a little bit of the thought process that led us to that, um, which was awesome. dependencies are such a huge topic that I think it, at least some of us felt that creating just a singular group to look at it might arbitrarily limit what people are able to come up with organically. And so by an in initial phase is encouraging multiple groups that are interested in it to go through how they would approach this problem independently. Then when we come back together as a group, then we have multiple ideas and ways that we can approach it. Um, and so I think the eventuality is that we'll have something a bit more focused or delegated. So if we come up with a bunch of categories, areas of interest and ways to scope it, then we can break that up and ideally align it to the working groups that make the most sense to cover those areas of dependencies. But until we come up with that framework and approach, we thought it would make more sense to start broadly. Um, and by having multiple conversations, then the hope is that we'll have various kinds of ideas. I mean, if everyone's in the same place, then it, it's harder to it's harder to have a divergent idea. I know it's just kind of part of the like th thought and the ideation process. And um, because he's not here, I'm going to pick on Matt a little bit because he's the one who is the the cross pollination between the groups. Um, and he was initially going to be serving as that the point of connection to know when it's time to bring bring it together and make it a bit more of a focused effort. Um, at least that was the initial thought after talking about it for our entire meeting. I think we probably had other agenda items that we didn't get to because this was really interesting. Um, but it's it's such a big topic that we we didn't feel like we had an immediate direction outside of that. So it looks like Matt dropped out and he added um, something in the document. Yes, the, the Zoom just exploded for me, he says. Yeah. Should we... Elizabeth, since you're the host, can you maybe end the call for all and then we all join in again? And then Matt will have to merge the recordings together. I will do that. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to stop recording. I'm no, I don't want to touch anything. So I'm going <laughs> to, so, so, I'm afraid I did it somehow. All right. Except one for the move. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So we were we had just been talking about um, dependencies because that was something oh, that we had talked yep. about a couple. So Sophia was sharing with us the logic behind um, the conversation that happened in the risk group. I think was where it happened. Uh, that kind of just was like the final. Okay, this is what we're gonna do for now until we bring everybody back together. We're gonna keep it in the separate working groups. So, um, did you have anything to add to that? Matt, no, or I, I else? think it, I think it makes a ton of sense. Um, I do. So the one thing that I do keep thinking about with respect to dependencies is we are going to have to have some tooling at some point somewhere. And I know that folks have been working on, not here in the chaos project, but other projects have been thinking about dependencies. Um, and I'm not sure how we kind of think through that. Part of it. So like in the in the metrics working group side of things, we can all think about what what does dependency, what do dependencies mean to risk or to value or um, to evolution. But then um, we've always worked in the chaos project to, to not just develop metrics for metrics sake, but then also have them be deployable in some way. Um, and this one's this one's harder for me. And in, in that email I had sent out, there was, I already forget the name of it, but um, there was a Linux Foundation project that has some dependency tooling. Do you remember, Sophia? I kind of forget what that was. I could look it up again in the minutes. So anyway, I, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I can try to find it in our notes. So yeah, does anyone have any questions about that or additional comments thoughts, to make? Thoughts, yeah.
So like Sean, looking at you. Sorry, I missed, I missed a few minutes. I had my, my con they're pouring concrete Thursday or Friday, so. Okay. I had to take a few questions. Um, so the, the question is here with respect to dependencies, like what, from Augur's perspective, do you have a, a path about how you would think about looking at dependencies from a technical perspective in Augur or, I mean, I guess with Daniel and Georg, same with Grimoire Lab. Thanks, Sophia. Well, we, we, know, Again, we know that we need to look, we know that we need to look at the library distributors, the package managers, because they give us dependencies. But we also know that we need to look at the import statements for anything that is a GitHub project that's not distributed by a package manager so that we can get that dependency and version understood. And, and there's some other things listed in the email I sent out, but there is a difference from a risk perspective between runtime and development dependencies. So that's, that's a consideration as, as well as distinguishing between runtime and development. Safety critical systems especially need that runtime dependency information. Cool. And I think there were a few other things in my in my note that we thought of during the meeting that don't exist in the top of my head. Gary or Daniel, are dependencies on the roadmap for Grimoire Lab at all? Do you know? So Grimoire Lab takes an approach to understanding the activity in the project and the people and what they do. Um, there is no intention of adding source code analysis or dependencies at the at the source code level between the packages. Um, we have code in Grimoire Lab that is for license scanning, um, but even that is not actively being used or deployed by anyone that I'm aware of. So the focus is really on the people. And when we talk about dependencies or relationships between projects at the person level, then yes, that is something in Grimoire Lab that we can talk about. Okay. Do other people have thoughts on this? Like, is this something that we care about technically in the chaos project? You know, or do we just say these are the <laughs> metrics that kind of matter? And then we say there's a bunch of other tooling that can, can pick these up, however that might happen. If I remember correctly, we've had this discussion a lot, a lot of times. Um, and we kind of, if I remember right, I, I, I've been in this kind of listening to this conversation for a while and we kind of, do this thing of like we table it until later uh, and later is just kind of not defined. Um, I feel like we should, uh, at best we could define a time at what, uh, like at uh, what point do we want to care about this or want to start working on this? Technically I mean, or technically, metrics wise? Technically we've started working on it in the past and sort of been when, when libraries.io went it the way that it went, we, we sort of lost it. And I, I, I think we need to, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to pick it back up. And it's a question of when and how we do that. Did that make sense? Yeah, um, I'm kind of curious about Sophia that link that you sent um, about dependency track. I don't know a lot about it. It was it just like come up in the meeting. <laughs> um, I think I think that might have been shared by David Wheeler, who's been joining the risk meeting groups, and he's been approaching it from a security and vulnerability standpoint. Um, and also trying to be the source of cross pollination with what's happening in this secure supply chain groups that are working around the Linux project. 
Um, so I think he had suggested that one and that was new for all of us. So we're, our homework is exploring it and finding out if this is something that we can make work for us. Yeah. I'm thinking they must be pretty well established if they're brave enough to use the term S-bomb because I realize that that's a pretty loaded term. Well, they might not know what the poods, what poods they're stepping in. I don't know them. <laughs> so I, I saw in the chat that Stephen needs to leave here in a minute. If we can take a segue for a little bit. Sure, I'd be glad to real quick. So about a month ago, RIT, which is the Rochester Institute of Technology, opened an open programs office, which makes us one of the first universities to do such a thing. And I've twisted the arms of the Department of Research Computing and asked them to spin up a Grimoire Labs instance for me, which they say they'll do by the end of the semester, which will be good. And um, Matt and Gay are going to start talking about what kinds of things might a university want for metrics, right? Well, a lot of the interest would be not only just reporting out, you know, how much university contributes, like other folks, you know, other, other industry folks do, but also um, for tenure and promotion and things like that, demonstrating impact on projects and proving that your efforts are worthy of your mighty role as a professor are important. So looking at things like that, looking at what kind of metrics might you wanna look at for student projects. Um, so that's as far as we've gotten. <laughs> and uh, since I got a bop, um, hopefully we can kick around some more ideas next week. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Stephen, we'll put you first. Cool. Thanks. So I think that's a really interesting topic. And I think it's going to be, he's the first. So it's going to just, the, the flood is going to open, I think. And there'll be a lot uh, more to follow. Johns Hopkins also has an open source program office that they've, I, I don't know if they've been working on it lately, but. Um, they have they have one as well, and there is this whole initiative to try to to build OSPOs inside of universities. So I think I have I have an open communication channel with Johns Hopkins on metrics because they're contracting Petrugia. So I will let him know that we are having this conversation here. That'd be great. Thanks. Do you all know when they set that up? I'm just curious. They started the OSPOR early this year, end of last year, maybe. Interesting. Okay. So we'll put him, we'll put that conversation first next, uh, next time. And then um, I think the, it looks like the last item we didn't really talk about yet is the Apache incubator clutch status, which we decided, Matt, you added that. And so I, did. I have you no idea correct. what that is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you get I, to talk about it. Well, I had, I had two things. Just This was just an update on the community reports, too, for people. Right now, we're having a little bit of a problem getting the logos. So as part of the, when people submit a request for a community report, we say, hey, if you would like to include your logo, to be on top of the community report, just can you attach it here? And then we would have the logo and we can put it on the report. Um, for whatever reason, like JPEGs in Firefox are the only only ones that will come across. I have no idea why. Um, so we're talking to, to folks with the Salesforce team, because I think this is, I, I'm guessing this is an issue there to try to get that solved. So we have a little bit of a hitch right now in the community reports, just so people know. Um, if the other we thing, can't, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. If we can't get the upload to work, we can do what we do for the chaos con where we just ask for a URL to the image file. That's probably the safest approach, to be honest with you at this point, and um, probably the most sensible approach to. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you too, so uh, good idea. Um, and then the, the only other thing I had on here was 
Um, yeah, the Apache thing. Um, and I, I'm guessing all of you are familiar with the Apache incubator about projects that would join the incubator and go through a series of steps to try to determine whether or not they would become Apache projects, I think is, I think I got that sentence right. And so the, this was just brought to my attention that if you scroll down to the bottom of that link that's there, you're going to get a bunch of um, metrics-y kind of things. I guess it's not actually at the bottom. It's just at the end of that big table. So my only thought was to, to start looking at this list as potential metrics candidates um, and kind of reach out to to folks at Apache. I mean, they're already in, they're already being deployed. I would love to know if they have taken the time to really formally document these. Um, and it might be a nice way to, to capture the work that, that is already being done at Apache. That's all. So there, I'm done. That's it. Nothing beyond that. Do we know anyone at that project, working on that project, like personally, that we could reach out to? I I don't. I guess no one else does uh, either. Sh Sharon, was that is that her name, Georg? Sharon Foga. Yeah, I, she's at the. ASF, or I assume she, she is, still is. Yeah, she's one of the core people involved in the Kibble project at the ASF. I don't know where she actually works. Okay, she might be a person to reach out to, just to get some bearings at all. Anyone have any other comments or thoughts on this? Okay. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? I don't think we have anything else. I put we? nothing else on the list. <laughs> Normally I just keep adding things, but I, I'll stop. <laughs> So it's open. It's open for discussion. Who has something they want to bring up? I have one thing to discuss that came up in one of the working group meeting is like audit trail of the metrics we develop. For example, once we develop a metric and we release it, we we no longer look at the like who are the contributors in developing that metric and who has can. I lost you, Vinod. I lost him too. Okay. I think he was mentioning about, it sounded like from the garbled words I could get, I think it, he's talking about the continuation of, or, or like revisiting some of the metrics that we released a while ago to see if we should revise them or improve them. Is that is that what everyone else thought he was talking about as well? I'm not certain, but uh, I do think that that is a, a key issue. So it was in the in the past when we when we did metrics releases, uh, all of the metrics would basically be re released at each uh, at each release. So it would go through the review process again, even if even if there were no changes. So when I and when I say in the past, we only did that uh, once or twice. But there was a general process where we were we were going back, and those metrics would go back into review. Uh, we are lacking that now, uh, and I, I think to a degree the working groups do kind of once it's been released, it's kind of let's move on to a different metric. Uh, however, uh, they're they're not done. They, they need to be, I think they need continuous attention so, or continued I mean, attention. 
Yeah, to that point, I'd, I'd like to make sure that the resolution of the change request, pull request, merge request, um, uh, review language is is addressed in the next monthly meeting. Did you, what did you want to do with that? Like just well, the the evolution working group has a pretty well spent a lot of time discussing it and we did bring it up in one of the uh, monthly meetings but we did not reach consensus about changing it from review which often is confusing to newcomers um, right. to change request okay and um, so I haven't made that change because I didn't sense and I, I think that was a meeting you missed Matt I didn't feel I had that we had consensus and I don't want to make changes without some degree of consensus about it, especially. Well, that's okay. Well, the next next week is the monthly meeting, so yeah, but yeah. So yeah, there's a note in the agenda, so we'll talk about that for sure. So, what do we want to do with this um, previous metric release? Do we do want to do an audit once a year? Do we want to? open all metrics up for public review every time or what do you all think my thought was just to encourage the working groups to kind of go back through yeah. their released the released metrics and spend maybe just one session relooking at them yeah i think i think updates that address changes in the technology are important to make i think fundamentally changing metric definitions could create the perception of volatility in what we're creating that would be less useful. Wait, say that last part again? The, that, you know, if we go in and fundamentally change the definition of a metric, that that oh. could create the perception of volatility. Yeah, right. That's exactly. what you're saying. Yep. We could, uh... Is there... Oh, go ahead, Kevin. I was going to say we, we could add some language to the uh, the metrics release that says, you know, it, it goes through this review period prior to release. However, you know, we're still accepting comments on these metrics for future releases or for future revision. And uh, uh, so direct people from those metrics release documents to uh, to still comment if they want to, even if it's outside of the comment period. Where would they comment? I think it would probably have to get directed to the, uh, the working group that the uh, metric was released from. Gotcha. So maybe an issue. So my guess is that any of the auditing is going to be just done largely by the working group. That uh, like a call for public auditing is not going to go very far. <laughs> So again, I would just encourage the working groups to take one of their meeting times to, to talk through any metrics that have been released, maybe encourage people who are on that call to revisit some of the metrics to return next week. That, that's my recommendation. Yeah, I, my sense is that even when we have the review period, we don't get that much outside contributions outside comments and I don't I don't have high hopes for just saying hey please comment usually we seek out these uh, conversations and that's what we're doing with uh, in the working groups and we ask people about their experiences or through the podcast or at conferences when we talk with people that's I think where we collect that feedback what kind of a cadence should we encourage working groups to do like once once a quarter once a month i thought your once a year your original once a year statement seemed fairly reasonable all right sounds like we have decisions So what else do we have to talk about? We have nine minutes. Let me talk about whatever y'all want. 
I'm actually pretty good. I am also. All right. Well, we can just give you all back your nine minutes and uh, yeah, have an awesome rest of your day and we will see you all next week. Thank you all. Have a great one. Bye, yeah. everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody.